Hello there, if we haven't met, my name is David and this channel is all about smart home tech. I am a technology enthusiast and I put this channel together so I could kind of have some fun doing some different projects around the house. Um, this video in particular is going to highlight our Christmas lights. Now, this video is not really intended to be a how-to as much as it is to just kind of show you the project and kind of walk you through high level what I've got going on here. So if you're looking for a how-to video on how to do this sort of thing, let me know in the comments section below and I could post something like that. Um, but I assume most of you are here just to kind of see how this sort of thing works and follow along on the project. Let's start by just kind of walking through what I've got going on here already. I still have a lot of stuff to order, but um, I kind of wanted to get a base layer started so I could make sure that I was capable of doing this project before I spend a ton of money on more stuff. These are just 3D printed props that I bought off of a, a website online. And I can't really explain the material. It's kind of like a honeycomb plastic. And the reason that it's honeycomb is to allow the heat to get out from the pixels because um, they can get kind of hot. And this came in two pieces. This larger piece was folded in half. So I just unfolded it, placed this on there, and then use a lot of four inch uh, white zip ties for this sort of project. Um, so there were pre-drilled holes there for those that you just run those zip ties through and cut them off. And what you're left with is a nice snowflake prop. Similarly, we have these candy canes and you'll notice that these also do not have the pixels in the holes yet, but that's what those holes are for is for the, the actual light bulbs to go in there. Um, these are intended to be close to the ground. So you'll see these kind of like parallel lines here. There's three sets of them. And what that's for is you use a piece of pipe to mount this and you would just um, put the pipe into the ground and then you could zip tie the pipe to these spots and that would be on the back side of this so then you know what you would see is the, the front and you wouldn't see that pipe. This is what one of these looks like with the pixels already installed. So each one of these is um, it's like a light bulb you could think of it kind of like a normal bulb on a string of Christmas lights However, because these are LEDs, inside of here you actually have three lights. There's a red, a green, and a blue. So although each one of these is one pixel, um, as far as programming this goes, you would actually individually control the red, green, and blue values for each bulb. Um, and then any combination of those three colors is how you would make up all of the colors in the spectrum. Taking a look at the back of this, you can see, um, you know, it's just all the wires, and again, things are zip tied together. That's exactly what you're seeing here. These lines show you how to put the pixels. This is one controller for the lights. This has 16 pigtails, and they are all numbered. You can see, like, that's number eight. Um, this is a whole topic in and of itself, really, because um, I bought this pre-put together, but you can buy the pieces of this individually and do it yourself. And there's all sorts of different options. Um, you know, one example is I bought a 12 volt power output, but there's other options. Additionally, you can see that I'm in the United States, so we have a 110 electrical supply, but that could also be different if you're in another country. Inside of here, you'll see that there's a lot going on, um, but it's basically just three things. Um, this up here is your power supply. Again, that's supplying 12 volts. That's connected into this board on the bottom that has all of your fuses as well as the outputs that would go to the strings of lights. And then up here on the top, this is the brains of the board. Um, it's connected off of this one spot here. There is data input and output and a little screen with some buttons. Um, this is uh, essentially where the data is processed, the packets of data that come in, and it determines how to push those out into the um, pigtails here that would then go to your strings of lights. The data output from here, this is just a normal CAT6 ethernet cord. That plugs into here. It will eventually come out of the bottom so it'll be waterproof, but for right now, I don't know how long of a cord I need, so I just kind of have it sitting here. This comes over to my laptop. It's just a normal data output here on this end. However, um, I have to use an adapter because Apple computers don't have the Ethernet jack, and then this just plugs into the computer 
and I can give you a brief explanation in a few minutes of how to set up the network. Um, when this is actually in production mode, when I've got everything installed on the house and the lights are automated to do what they do, um, this is actually what this will be plugged into. This is called a Raspberry Pi. It's basically just a computer. It's a tiny little computer. You can see the little panel in there. And it just has the basic stuff you need, like HDMI outputs, USB-C, there's audio, USB, and your ethernet. So um, if you've seen my other videos, in the networking closet in our house, there is an ethernet switch. This will sit in my office on my desk. It will then be connected into a wall plate with an ethernet jack. And then within the networking closet, um, that data line will go into the ethernet switch that I showed you. Out of there, there will be four outputs that then go through the house, through the walls, and they come outside of our house. Um, you might be able to see it here, mm, just not. But there is an output on the outside of the house where those four ports will be. Then from those four ports, um, we will have, well, this year there's gonna be three controllers. Um, so one of those would be unused, but I'll run lines that then plug into here. So you might ask, why did we only do four ports if we're already gonna have three controllers and this might expand over time? Well, the answer to that is simple. This is also a data output. So if we need to repeat this signal that's coming in, we can also output from all four of these controllers. So essentially we um, can daisy chain them off of each other and we should never really run out. Over on this side of the table, I just have some miscellaneous stuff here. These are called uh, heat shrinks. And you can kind of see here, all it is, if I need to cut a piece of wire or say like in this case, I've got some extra pigtails. Um, you know, there's multiple wires inside of here. I could then use this soldering kit that I have to solder the ends of the wires to, you know, wherever they need to go to. And then these heat shrinks would go over the wires to protect them from the elements. This big piece here is actually three pieces. And what this is, is a matrix. So these are kind of overlapped funny, so it might be hard to see in the video, but each one of these is a hole where a pixel would go, just like the other props. On the top of our porch, we have a space where I had thought about doing icicle lights, but instead decided to do this matrix. So these three will be connected end to end and it'll be one really long matrix with, um, you know, whatever this is, like six tall. And then I think it's like something like 150 wide. Okay, so again, like I said, this is the Raspberry Pi. This is what the show would actually run from during the winter time. So eventually you'll see me post some videos of the lights in action. This is what will actually be playing that. For right now, for the purpose of setting this up, I'm using my laptop. Um, so I showed you, we connected the controller into my computer. You can see over here that pigtail number one is connected to the snowflake that already has these pixels on it. And then we will plug in the power outlet here and you'll see here that the snowflake has um, lighted up. This controller has an IP address, just like your computer does or any device, the device that you're watching this video on right now has an IP address assigned to it. Basically what you need to know about an IP address is Let's use this video for example. This file will be stored on a server somewhere, wherever YouTube keeps it. And when you click on this video, um, that file will be split up into chunks and sent to you. Those chunks are called packets. The packets might not all take the same route to get to your computer. Some could go through cables under the sea. Some could go from satellite to satellite. Others could follow other cabling or whatever. But you know, the end game is that all of those packets will get to your computer and they're all numbered. Um, your phone or computer will then process those packets, put them back in order and play uh, the video to you. So the reason you need an IP address is because the server needs to know where to send all of that data. Um, in this case, to your phone or computer that you're watching from. This also has to have an IP address so that the computer knows where to send the data. There could be multiple controllers. It just needs to know where to go. And this controller needs to know what it's 
uh, virtually what its name is. So if we go to our settings on the computer, what you'll see here is that right now I'm connected to Wi-Fi, so that is green. And there is also this one called AlphaPix. That's the name of the controller. The IP address is set to 192.168.0.1 and subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Basically what it's saying is it's gonna look for any address that's in between this and this. So you'll see it's green because we are connected. That means that we have a network set up. So now that we know the network is set up, and we know that we have power and we know that everything is testing good because of the lights being blue, I can launch the application that I use to program the pixels. Um, this is a very, very popular one called X Lights. Um, you can Google it and there's a whole community on Facebook of X Lights users. Um, they're very friendly. They've really helped me get set up and get my feet under me. Um, on this first tab, you could set up your controllers. The second tab is where you can set up the layout of the house. Um, and then the third one is called the sequencer, which is where you would program the lights. So I just opened a sequence that I have already set up and I'm not gonna go into details on how to do this. I just kind of want you to see um, that this is sort of how it works. There's pre-set up um, effects up here that you can drag and drop onto the individual props or groups that you want if you've set that up and then you have um, a uh, the layout of the house which i showed you a minute ago and then we can actually play from here and we will be able to see it take place on the props so i'm going to show you i won't be able to play the audio for this because this is a mariah carey christmas song that i don't own the rights to and for copyright reasons i can't play it but i can show you the sequence sequence without the music so we'll go ahead and play this. You can see that it's uh, it's showing you what the house would look like here if everything was connected. And then over here, you can actually see that the prop is lighting up as it's supposed to. And you can see that it's actually doing on the snowflake what you see here. The prop that you're looking at now is this left snowflake that currently doesn't have anything showing on it, but there you go. And you'll see it's kind of flashing with the screen here. Um, eventually I will be ordering and getting everything else set up here and I can post another video to give you an update when that happens. Also, I'd like to update you once I get all this stuff set up out in the yard so you can actually see everything set up the way it's supposed to be. And um, then I'll post a couple of videos this winter, like around Christmas time, to show you the whole setup in action without me talking so you can see how it looks. Well, there you have it. I hope that you've enjoyed this quick high-level update on my latest project. If you're interested in learning more about smart holiday lighting, please let me know down in the comments so I know to post uh, more detailed videos. This is really just intended to be a high-level um, sort of explanation of how this stuff works and what I'm working on. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing down below and check out the rest of the videos on our channel. Um, and enjoy your Christmas in July. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. It is extremely hot outside. It's kind of hard to believe that um, I'm already thinking about Christmas, but that's the life of a smart home enthusiast. Gotta be ahead of the game, right? Anyway, thanks again for watching. See you next time.